Hello everyone and welcome to GIR Golf and welcome to today's golf rules tip playing two balls. All of us have hit our golf ball into an area on the golf course where we may not be sure on what to do, what the rules allow us to do that is. So in that event if you're playing a stroke play uh, tournament then you are allowed to play two balls and write down the score of those two balls and sort out the matter later and that's what this video is going to show us in detail on how to do that. I'm going to have a real world situation out here where I may not be certain on what action to take according to the rules. We're going to show you what the rules allow you to do in regards to playing two balls. With that being said, you'll notice I said stroke play. If you're playing a match play uh, tournament, meaning you're just playing one on one with a fellow component, or excuse me, a fellow opponent, that is, uh, this rule you cannot use. If you're playing match play, you must work out the situation with your opponent or call for a rules official to get that situation taken care of right there during that hole. Otherwise, uh, you don't have the option of playing two balls in match play. Again, this is only stroke play. If you're uncertain about what course of action to take, this uh, rules video is really gonna help you. Let's get to it, let's have some fun. Okay, let's have some fun with this golf rule on playing two balls. Let's pretend I'm playing a par four and my tee shot landed right here, shot number one. Now, you can see in the distance there, on my green, I've got a flag. That's my golf hole today. And however, I've got these two electricity poles in my way. I'm gonna get up here and hit my shot. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I just attempted my second shot on this par four and I have struck this left electricity pole. Now my ball is out of camera range and way over there. Now, me uh, playing the game, no, I'm noticing that these are electric poles, that they're man-made, and I know there's rules such as, you know, I can take cart path relief because that's a man-made, immovable object. However, I'm uncertain on this electricity pole thing. Uh, because I've played different golf courses. They have different inter interpretations. I, they didn't mention it in the rules meeting before the round. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to elect to play two balls to make sure my score is accurate. And there are several steps we need to do to make sure when we decide to play two balls that our score is accurate. Let's get into that, go over the details. Okay, so step number one in playing two balls when you're in a situation like this where you're uncertain what to do in stroke play, again, you cannot do this in match play, is to first notify your fellow competitors that you're going to play two balls because you're uncertain. So that's step number one. Along those lines, I'll give you a little tip out there. Your fellow competitors will probably have an opinion on what you are to do, and they'll probably try to, they may even know, they may really know, uh, but there again, uh, you are responsible for your actions. So if there's not a rules official around, go ahead and play two balls. The rules of golf allow you to do that. There's no harm in doing this. Um, re just remember that and just tell them respectfully, hey, you know, I, I respect your opinion on the matter, but I'm honestly unsure. I want to make sure my score is accurate and we'll just deal with it after the round with the rules committee. So step number one, notify your fellow competitors. Now, step number two, I need to decide right now which of these two balls is to count in the event that both of them do count and uh, abide by the rules of golf. For example, I, I play both of these balls and I get a three with the one I replay and I get a four with the one I play as it, as it lies. Uh, I cannot at the end, when the rules committee tells me, hey, both of them counted, uh, which one do you want? I can't pick the birdie, for example. So I have to decide that now in the event that both of the both of these options I choose uh, account. So I'm gonna let my fellow competitor know right now that I want to uh, have the one that I retry here hitting shot two to count in the event that both count. So that is step number two, decide which ball is to count if both balls do. Step number three is to simply play the both balls from the respected locations and note down their scores. Now you'll notice I have a different color ball that I'm gonna to use to use the option of hitting, uh, replaying this shot, hitting shot two right here. And that's because I wanna make sure that this ball is easily recognizable, especially when I get up around the hole to make sure that I'm playing the correct ball each time I do this. I highly recommend 
you may using your provisional ball use a you put a different marking on your ball uh, before you do this to make sure these two scores are accurate you want to make sure that you're hitting the correct ball each time and counting the scores accurately uh, with that being said the rules of golf don't specify any order that i am to do this so i'm going to hit them in whatever order I feel like and write down each score. Again, it's very handy to have a different color ball for this or at minimum, make sure you put a specific mark on it and you can even do that at this time with a Sharpie. So step number four in playing two balls is to take the results of your two balls at the end of your round to the rules committee and go over what happened in detail with them before you sign your scorecard. Again, make sure you do all this, sort it out before you sign your scorecard with the rules committee because they have the final say on what actually is your accurate score in the scenario. They may tell you that both counted. In that case, you already did your job and you selected the one you replayed, congratulations, you got a par. They also, they also may tell you, you had to play the balls that lies. And hey, you did that, you know, congratulations. You know, you got a bogey, uh, not as good a result, but at least you had a, an accurate score where you did not get a penalty invoked on you on top of your score. So that's where it really helps you. Uh, from my experience with uh, electric poles, we have uh, a lot of those on we have some courses around my hometown here where electric poles are a part of the course. They're on there. Electric lines cross a few holes. And uh, most often, I see on the scorecard, they say you must replay the shot. Uh, you don't have any options. So if I just went up there in this example and played the balls at lies, uh, and, I had, and I did not play two balls, assuming you know that that's what I needed to do, uh, I didn't have the option of, uh, I didn't utilize the option of replaying it, my score would not be a five, it would be a seven on this hole because that would have been a two stroke penalty because I played the ball from the wrong spot. We'll go over uh, some wrong spot uh, rules down the road, but that's where this rule can really help you. Again, you are responsible for your actions. Your fellow uh, competitors will have opinions. Make sure that you keep this rule in your back pocket to make sure your score is accurate. Hopefully this has helped all of you out there, help you save some strokes down, down the road. Uh, those, uh, those of you that play in tournaments, remember to smile often, have fun. God loves you. We'll see you next time.